Hello, everybody. Welcome to another wonderful session of Met Related Pep Talk. And in today's episode, I will be taking you through how to um, generate simple, you know, um, moving average. Maybe you've got a data set that's a time series you're working with and you want to smoothen out the data and then see exactly um, defined trends without having too much variability or too much noise in the data. And so one of the easiest way to do that is, one of the easiest approaches to do that is to um, employ the moving average or what we call the rolling mean, to be able to smoothen out the data and then to see um, recurring trends or cycles over a period of time. And so we start off first by importing our XRA package, which is done on line nine. And then, well, I didn't need the NumPy package. So um, I can decide to take that one out for now and then do purely in the XRA. Now, our input file, which I decided to call our info, is a crew time series. That's version 4.03. It's found in 1901 to 2018. And there's actually temperature data set. Um, the variable to be used from this data set actually bears the same name as this TMP. So it's quite easy to do with that. Now, I make use of the X array to open the data set and then to read the data content from the input file and then save it into the variable data. Now I can decide to, there's more sequential approach where I'm trying to um, call out the variable CMP directly from the data and then give it a new variable name. But then um, as long as I can always remember, I can ignore this part and then make use of it when I'm referencing to that particular data set in a particular line. Okay, so the next thing to do, which um, is quite easy in here, is to either select data for a location. We can also average data for uh, an area, I mean for an area. This has been done in a subsequent video, so I'll, I mean, um, in a very previous video, so I'll indicate that. I'll leave that in the description box. If you have any um, challenges or any doubt, you can refer to that video, and that would help you. So what I'm doing in here is to define a point X, which can be any location, and then from that data variable, I mean, the whole data variable that has been defined, I call out the temperature from that data. And then after calling out the temperature from that data, I actually pull out just that data for a particular point. So I make use of the cell function and then define the longitude and latitude for which it should select the data from. And then we indicated that we it's best to in, include the method nearest since you might not get exactly that location, depending on the grid spacing and then the you know the intervals or the, the exact spacings of the data. So you might probably have a location that wouldn't sync with the defined longitude and latitude. So it's better to use the method nearest so that if it doesn't fall exactly on that point, at least it will be able to pick the closest point to it, which is quite okay. All right, so now we have our point X data. We, we can run this whole script. And while it's running, we go on to um, first visualize the point X. So to do that, it will just be point X. And then because there's a point, so it's definitely a time series, we can actually verify that from here. So let's see what point X is. So point X contains data. The longitude latitudes are fixed. That's just a point. And then it's varying over time. So it's a time series. So if I just do point X dot plot, I should have a time series plot. And bear in mind, the data is a monthly data. So we have a lot of um, variability in there. So to smoothen out the data, first let's try to um, average them. Let's make this a yearly data. So we make use of the group by function to group this by time dot year. And then we can now find the mean over the time. So 
let me call this um, year average. So run this section and then we have the year average. Okay, so we can then plot out the year average. You can um, just have a year average, the plot. Then that's the yearly um, average data. That's the yearly average temperature for that location. That's longitude, this and latitude there. Okay, now this is just the yearly mean information. I want to make use of a rolling mean in this <clears throat> to see what the trends are maybe over a selected window and then trying to check the variability, like trying to reduce the, the noise in the data, but then try to smoothen it out. Then I would make use of the rolling mean. So let me call this a moving average or an MA. And we are making use of the year average. Okay dot rolling mean. Then one thing to check first, let's see what the year average contains that would help us. So we see here that the, the time, because we averaged the yearly data, I mean the monthly data, we averaged it on a yearly um, basis. Now the time has changed, time changes to year. So if I'm gonna make use of the rolling mean, then it means I have to define the rolling mean over the year. I believe that's very clear. So I indicate here that the year, which is now on the basis for which we are averaging, equals to, then I select the window to create, uh, maybe I need five year moving average. So year equals to five. And that would definitely generate the five-year moving average. Now I can just plot out the moving average and then run these two lines. That gives me, um, I think, oh yeah, yeah, sorry. That shouldn't be mean, it's just rolling, yeah, sorry. So if I rerun these two lines, Okay, first off, let me run this line first and see. Oh, my bad. So after this, we should have the mean to indicate the averaging. All right. And then now when we plot it, that should work out. Okay, so we can make use of these two, at least so we can have a fair view of the variation. Okay, so that's it. So we see in here, the blue lines are the yearly averages. And then the orange line is the moving average. So we see a more smoothing um, time series. So this tells us what's happening over every consecutive you know, five year period, starting from a very fixed point and then stepping in year by year in five year windows or five year gaps to see what's really happening. And so there's one of the very easiest ways of, you know, averaging your data and then seeing visibly trends over selected time windows. And so feel free to make use of the rolling mean. If you have any question, just leave it in the description box. I hope you have fun learning and keep exploring. It's always bigger on the other side. Thank you for your time. And don't forget to subscribe too. Thank you.